What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. Gonna be diving into a Reich knife today. Before we get too far into that, I wanna go ahead and say thank you to anyone who's already liked and subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below, or you can head over to Instagram, or not or, but please also head over to Instagram and follow us at Work Knife Balance 939 It's a great way to communicate with us. Let us know what you wanna see, what you don't wanna see, all that cool jazz. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this knife. This is a Reich knife from the recent Reich mail call we had the other day. And this one I was really excited about. So I, in the most recent years, have come pretty enamored with Persian style blades. And that's exactly what this is. Oh my gosh. It just feels good. It's just a good knife. It's got a nice flipper on the back. You've also got these thumb studs right here to kind of flip out from it as well. You can reverse flick off of it, you can thumb flick off of it, and you've got the flipper on the back there. We'll go ahead and get tip to tail measurement for you and then we'll do some side by side comparisons. Tip to tail, we're looking at nine inches. For the blade, we're looking, we're gonna say four inches on the blade without 3.75 on the cutting edge. For side by side comparisons, I wanted to pull a couple Persian style blades. So we've got the Wee Ziphius up above, or sorry, this is the Wee Murata up above. We've got the uh, Shirogorov Quantum down below, right there. Both larger knives, as you can see in there, kind of right in that same category as the right Lamella. And then we'll go ahead and get the, let's see. Kunwu Ronin, and then we'll do a CJRB Gobi. All Persian-esque style blades, really nice design, really great, fantastic action on all of those, as well as the Lamella, so. Bunch of different price ranges in there. This guy's coming in at $355. You can get it on Katua's website, or Katua Reich's website right now. Um, it has M390 blade steel, and it is a titanium frame lock. There is some really cool features about it. Let's see if we can see the M390. There's the M390 right there, and then it is numbered. This is number 280. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there. But then you can see the lamella banding right there with the name on it on that side. There are some pretty cool features about this. So you can see that there are no hardware screws showing. Part of that is because this right here is kind of a lock on the back where you can actually pop that off and then this whole back space slides off the end and then you've got access to lock screws in there and stuff like that. So it looks like Reich is doing a lot more with the way that they are engineering and manufacturing their knives to have more aesthetically pleasing knives and hiding some of the hardware making these like hidden pivot points and stuff like that they're they're doing some really cool stuff and on top of all the cool features that they're adding they continue to have a high high level of execution on their knives as they put these out here as you can see this thing is just absolutely dialed that's really snappy you can open it from pretty much anywhere on the fuller um, as it comes through here and you get really good action I'm opening it with that ring finger there even and it just really kind of whips out which is the weakest of fingers for me to do that reverse flick with besides the kind of integral look to it right there you do have a uh, pit or sorry pivot you do have a like hole right here for a lanyard if you wanted to um, which is nice. I'm not a big lanyard person. I've got a few lanyards, but not a ton and you have a super slicey belly blade here So I like that a lot. You also have a really good finger choil, which is something that I haven't seen a lot as of recent We just did a knife the other day that had the finger choil on it as well And I really appreciate it because it makes it easy for that choke up Not that you need to because this is a big knife, but that choke up spot is so comfortable really ergo uh, ergonomic as it goes up there and it makes it feel fantastic in hand. You can do a reverse grip on this as well, but um, that just like regular hold there is really nice. I didn't use this to cut anything because it's not my knife, but um, I wouldn't be scared to cut with it as well. It's got the M390 steel, so you've got some really nice 
premium steel coming through as well. There are two variations. There's this one right here, which has kind of got the uh, dark gray color, and then there's a black DLC shell one too. So this is the dark gray and silver, and then they've got a black DLC. I am surprised that they don't have something with a little bit more color. And maybe this is just because it's an updated version of the Lamella. I don't know what the original Lamella looked like. Or if there's a secondary version that does have more color to it. But um, I am surprised that there's really no like premium material to the colored. The PVD version is, the black PVD is 385 so it's upgraded a little bit um, and just costs a little bit more. But I... I I am really surprised that they don't have something with a Timascus or a uh, Zerkutai or Mokutai or anything like that. Not that they do a lot of that, but it's it's just nice to see some color on knives like this to add a little pop. I don't necessarily need something like this where you have a ton of color. I love this knife, I will say that. I know a lot of people don't. But something like that backspacer that's lightning anode or something like that to add to it, I think is just really another thing that's nice to give you a little bit of color to this. but. There's so much in this already, um, in just the unique aesthetics of not having any of the hardware, having the um, action be so fantastic as it is, and having it be an inset liner lock. So you have good access to that lock bar right there, and it is jimped as well, so it's nice and easy. But having it be an inset liner lock versus a frame lock, frame lock, frame lock, liner lock. Um, but having it be something like that makes it a lot nicer because I feel like you don't have to worry about the bar then, which a lot of times on Persian style blades, um, I have found more often than not, I'm resting on the, the way I hold it. I, I rest on that lock bar and so I have to be cognizant to pull my finger back so I don't rest on the lock bar. So yeah, I don't have much else to say. It is a pricey blade and we will go ahead and put the link down below, but I think it is well worth the 350 that it that they're asking for it. It is it is pretty amazing the action that they put into this, the material that they put into it, the aesthetics that they put into it. You can see the kind of milling that they did on the backside right here as well as on the edges, the way that you have the chamfered edges coming through, the way it feels in your hand. It's They've done a lot of really good detail. A lot of the lines that they put into this just, they look kind of like a shell, like a seashell or like, um, I'm thinking more of like, this is going to sound weird, kind of like a dinosaur plate. Like you have the, the plated protection coming through here off like a back like I'm seeing like this is something that would be hunched over their heads in their shell right here and they're protected away I, I know that seems weird but I am thinking like this is something that's going to be a little bit more protected something that adds a little bit of extra structural integrity to it and whatnot and I, I don't know but it I really like the lines that they added to it and I think part of that is just a really cool feature definitely worth it uh, for the 355 price in there. Don't have much else to say, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And until next time, TTFN.